Alrighty guys, I'm KC and welcome to a brand new Let's Play here on the channel guys. Welcome to Eternal Darkness. Welcome to one of my all time favorite games in the entire world which is Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. And this game came out on the Nintendo GameCube, and as always with all my Let's Plays, we are playing on the original hardware, we are capturing using an Elgato, and we are going to fully complete this game, including the hidden secret ending, which I have never seen, despite the fact I have played this game numerous times. So without any further ado, guys, let's get into the game. Here we go! <laughs> Flesh, bone, bound together with the oddest magical incantation. This wretched book is where it all began so long ago, before time, before humanity. I am Dr. Edward Roivas. I am a clinical psychologist. I am also dead. This is not my story, nor even the story of the Roivas family. It is the story of humanity. Like it or not, believe it or not, as you will. Your perceptions will not change reality, but simply color it. Humanity has been on the edge of extinction for two millennia. Ignorant of so much, and dependent on so few. The Guardians grow restless. Their time once again near. Whether by fate or misfortune, my family has crossed their path, and they didn't take kindly to it. Their attention turns to my granddaughter, for she is the last of my line, and the last hope for humanity. So here we are. We are playing as Alexander Roivas, the granddaughter of the guy we've just been speaking about, Edward Roivas. And we start off in this sort of like dream state. So we go ahead, take off his head. We can look over here, we can take off his head. Let's move over here and... Nope, nope, lock onto that guy. No, 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 we're locking onto the one guy. We're locking onto this guy. Lock onto the guy that's shooting you, man. Lock onto the guy that's shooting you. Yeah. Okay. Now, eventually, I do believe, if I remember correctly, we do indeed end up running out of ammunition right here. Oh, jeez. We can go over and check the door. All right, we just accidentally shoot the door. Remember that, remember that. This game deserves a remake. It really does. Uh, hello? Miss Alexandra Roivas? Um, yeah, who's this? This is Inspector Legratz of the Rhode Island Police. I'm sorry to disturb you, but there's been an accident with your grandfather. I'll be on the next flight out. Miss Roivas, I'm pleased to meet you. I trust you had a pleasant trip? Um, yes, I suppose so, considering. Yes, my condolences. This is most unpleasant. It's a shame we couldn't meet under brighter circumstances. Yes, it is. Can we get this over with, please? Of course. Uh, this way. But I must warn you, it's not a pleasant sight. I'm afraid there's not much to see. Miss Roivas, 
Is that your grandfather, <laughs> Edward? Yes, it's him. He's wearing our family ring. <laughs> I don't understand. Why are you showing me this? Can't you check dental records or something? What is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm... I'm sorry. It's my job, lady. You're the only living relative, and no, we can't check dental records. There's no head. No, none of this makes sense. There's no sign of intrusion, and there was certainly a lot of force used here. I have never seen anything like this in my 20 years on the force. We have no evidence except for the body, and what's left doesn't say much. Well, we don't have a single clue. Well, you better find out who did this. I'm not leaving Rhode Island until you do. There must be some clue in this old mansion revealing what happened. I want answers. So do I. I wish I had some. Shocked by her grandfather's mysterious death and frustrated at the incompetence of the local police, Alex vows to uncover the truth. She decides to search the mansion, the place where Edward conducted his research. If there was a tie to his past, and possibly a tie to his murderer, it would be here. So, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go guys. But, I want to point out something right in the beginning. So, if we turn around and we head in this direction, and we walk all the way here, we find the front door. And we open the front door, and it says, The call of the mansion beckons to Alex, drawing her back to uncover the family secrets it hides. Alex will not leave till she has learned what happened to her grandfather. But that's the front door, okay? Now, Edward was found in the study, which is through this door right over here, look. And if we nip through this door right here, we can see this is clearly where Edward was found, right? He was laid dead right here. Now, Alex came from this direction to meet the copper over here. This is where she met the copper. However, if we were to go to this way, there's no door to the outside world. So for her to have come to meet the copper at this particular location in the house right here, she would have had to walk past her grandfather's body. But how could she? Without seeing it, she hadn't seen it until afterwards. I love little continuity errors like that. Little things like that drive me absolutely crazy, but I like it. Anyway, this game is a survival horror game. And our first sort of like puzzle that we need to solve is through here. There's this clock right here. And if we were to click this clock, you can see that it says, what, 2 minutes to 12? Maybe 3 minutes to 12? The looming grandfather clock seems to stand ominously in the corner, gazing on this empty room with an almost per particularly air of... Heart trick. I can't say that word. <laughs> Use this and that to adjust the clock hands. Should Alex adjust the clock hands? Okay, so we can adjust the clock hands and we've got to find a time to do it to. And I think I remember the time, but I do remember where we need to go to find the time. So we'll go there. I think the time is 3.33 is what I'm thinking. But I could be wrong on that. I could be wrong on that. Here we go. A beautiful carriage clock. The hands appear to be stuck, yet the clock continues to tick with the time permanently set to 3.33. There is a key in the back of the clock, presumably for winding it. Should Alex, Alex look at the key? Alex picks up the dress clock and pulls the key from it. However, there is something odd about the key. It isn't for winding at all. It looks like a dresser key. Okay, good, 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 good. We gotta adjust the key. I have to make sure my mic's picking up. And it is. Which is all good. We found the dresser key. Brilliant. Okay, so now we can head through here and over to that clock. We already know what we've got to press, what we've got to click. 3.33. So unlike a lot of games, this does not have sort of one character that you play continuously as. You start off as Alex. And Alex is probably your main character throughout of the whole series. But, can I please, yes, adjust the clock. But, over the course of the series, we get what is called the Tomb of Darkness. And so, what we do is we, we uncover pages for this Tomb of Darkness. 
And as such, we play as different characters with each page that we unlock. So if we were to go through here, we should be able to see the Tome of Eternal Darkness for the first time. The study. Oops. And just as predicted, guys, the Tome of Eternal Darkness is right here. A large, leather-bound antique book rests upon the cluttered desk. Should Alex read the book? I had no knowledge of what was to come. Nor did I care. How the knowledge changed me, it will also change you. As you read this, you will come to learn fear as I have. You too will come to understand, or you will perish. To think that once I could not see beyond the veil of our reality, to see those who dwell behind. My life now has purpose, for I have learned the frailty of flesh and bone. I was once a fool. Where is Queer Scandamast? Where is Consumantine? Make sure they take enough water. Tanimus Eolum. They're in high spirits. Hupnahuis. These battles are not a problem. The Inceptum. If we are to complete our mission. Quam primum, Kenturi Augustus. Wallow rest. I would like to compliment you once more on your battle tactics. Our enemies did not have a chance. Do you believe that it really exists, Centurion? I do not doubt our Emperor's beliefs. Or his orders. But if we are to retrieve the artifact, then we must be strong and patient. So this is our first ca character. This is Pius Augustus. And he's the first character and he will keep reoccurring throughout the entirety of this game. Although we only ever play as him this one time. But this location is one of the few locations in the game that we keep coming back to. You'll find that we flick between the manor, this location and a couple of other locations as we progress through the game. As we continually switch characters between different ones. So... Pius Augustus is obviously a Roman sentry, and we are going to go down here. A ladder leads into the dark heart of the labyrinth. Danger lurks beneath, yet Pius courageously resolved does not buckle. Should Pius climb down the ladder? Down and down into the deep. Who knows what we'll find beneath? Oh, there's some of these, like, zombified skeletons. And a block. A red block. Oh, great. The zombified skeleton is alive. As if my day couldn't get any worse. Traped through the hot desert, defeated my air foes, and now I'm fighting the undead. Okay. So, it's right trigger to go ahead and lock on, and then you can press any way on the analog stick to sort of move between different limbs of the body, and then you just press A to attack. 
Take off the head is obviously beneficial. I love when they sort of like look for the head like that. It's like, hey, my head. Where's my head gone? It was here a minute ago. Oops. Hit the arm. Hit the arm. My head. It's gone. Then we can use a B button to finish them, which right now isn't really going to do much. But later on, when we get our sanity meter, finishing them is important because that recovers our sanity meter. And the sanity effects in this game are amazing. So as our sanity meter decreases, sort of our grip on reality starts to crumble and we start to see illusions and there are really cool sanity effects that can happen. Things like walking on the ceiling, uh, sit slowly sinking through the ground, of just suddenly boom and all of your sort of organs and limbs fall off. The granite block on the floor, we'll pick that up, it's a red one. But well, as pious, we don't get the sanity meter, so we don't have to worry too much about that, I don't think, anyway. I'm pretty sure we don't unlock the sanity meter until we play as the next character. But I could be wrong on that one. This guy's big, look, 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 he's a big boy. I don't think so, sir. Yeah, you, you've lost your head. You've kindly dropped it on the floor. No, it's not there, sir. It's down below you. It's right between your legs. Oh, now look at that. See, you should have just gone for it. You should have just bend down and picked your head up and put it back on. You'd have been all right. Okay, strange granite block rests upon the floor. So remember this room because later on we will return to this area and it will be several years later and things will change. I think we get a door here at some point and another door right there, I believe. But for right now, this is in the early days and it is all okay. Oh, hello. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Let's just, you know, block on the one that is nowhere near us. You can get got, sir. And you can too. Okay, deal with you. Armless, he's armless. We ain't gonna worry about him. You can get it got. See? Now, these are only just one of the said zombified sort of like skeletons that we'll face. Um, this game is based around Pius Augustus trying to summon a god and bring a god into this world. Now, which god he decides to bring into this world is entirely our choice at the beginning of the game. You see, a little bit later on, we're going to get a choice between doing one or, well, one of three runes. And whichever room we pick, it's sort of going to dictate the way the game progresses. Each room progresses the game slightly different, although you still follow the exact same story path. Just the enemies that you encounter, the bosses that you face, and overall what Pius is trying to do is different. So we go down here. There's another set of these quite easily. It hasn't given us a tutorial on fighting, I think. It usually does. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up this door here. And here we are. We have all three possible runes on the wall, but there is a fourth one. And like I've said, this game has a hidden ending, and that is with the fourth rune, which I have never done. But we're not on the rune selection screen just yet. We're at the skill Kaliton. Skill Kaliton. Skill Kaliton, really? <laughs> a word's that difficult today, EKC. Ah, oh. we're at the kill skeleton stage, which is where we need to kill these zombified skeletons. Don't like them. They remind me a little bit of my wife. Actually, no, they're better looking. There we go. We got the granite block. And now we can put these in here. We can actually go to our menu screen here. And this tells us the use function, the equip function, and the check function. And as we any other game, you can sort of check your blocks and have a look around them and stuff. And we're just going to... I was in front of the black one. Yes, the purple one, rather. So we'll go ahead and we'll use the purple one. If you put the wrong one in the slot, then you get some more zombified skeletons come out at you. My hair is just looks all weird. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and put this one in here. Easy enough. And then the purple one is Mantarok. This one, I believe, is Chuchugara. We check it. Does it say? No, it doesn't say. And then you've got Uli Earth. And I can never remember the other one. Uli Earth, I believe, is blue. And the green one is the one I can never remember. Selton, I think. I think. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. We'll find out. We'll find out. The door is open. So like I said at the beginning of this, this is one of my all-time favorite games. I really wish that they would bring out at least a remastered version of this game. 
So this is our combat tutorial. Pius, you must prove your worth by destroying this statue. Pressing R will enable Pius to select which target to attack. Releasing R slightly and then pressing it again will cycle between multiple targets. Pius can attack specific body parts while locked onto an enemy by moving the analog stick and pressing A. Use the directional buttons to attack the head and the arms. So we hold R and press up, we get the head. We hold right, we get the arm. We hold left, we get the other arm. And if we just let it attack normally, we attack the chest. And now we can go through this door, which leads us into the next area. There's a big gong that looks like we need to press it. But I remember, yes, I remember there being some skeletons in here. So let's sort of like, no, it's not letting me cycle between them. It must be too far away. Yeah, there we go. Now it's letting me cycle. I don't think we've actually taken a hit this time. Oh, we're out of his way. I do not want to take a hit. Go after the arm. Go after the arm. Go after the arm. There we go. And now what we can do is we can sort of examine this. A button attached to a small pylon softly illuminates the room. A bizarre energy seems to radiate from it. Should Pius push the button? Yes, he should. There we go. In to the portal we go. Here we go, Pius. Here we go. Now we have been teleported to this area. Remember how I said we had to select a rune? Well, here we are. These are the three runes. These are the conduits of the gods. These are the artifacts of the gods. And this game doesn't really have a easy, normal, or hard difficulty, but you can kind of class these runes as such because you see, the green one means that you'll be finding a lot of green sort of creatures and the zombies from the green ones die if you give them a headshot. Now with the blue one, they die after a headshot and one limb severed, but with the red one they die after a headshot and you have to sever both limbs and even then they will still come at you. So they just sort of, the, the kind of regular zombies that you'll be dealing with, which don't really make much of a difference because all of the harder creatures that really pose the challenge still take the same amount of hits. But we're going to start off with Uliath, I think. Shaped like a delicate dome, a pale blue statuette floats gracefully above the pedestal. Should Pius claim this artifact? He looks cool. He really looks cool. I love him like Eons that. Eons have passed since then, and I have learned much. All at once, I understood. The forces of the multiverse all made sense under the transcending power of Ulyoth. No mountain too high. No city too far. Face me, and you shall surely perish. Alex has acquired the Tome of Eternal Darkness. So I think... Oh wow, the green screen is sort of messed up a little bit there. I'll fix that, fix that for the next episode. So I think that is a good place as any to end off this episode, guys. We have our main bad guy, Pius Augustus. We have our main protagonist, Alex Voivus, who is sort of back there behind my chair. You can see her. She's just peeking out through this hole. There you go. Look, there's her head. Look, peering over my shoulder. Boy, this game is a really good one. I really love this game, and I really wish it was a lot more popular than it actually is. But it's still a really good game. If you've never played it, and you are a survival horror fan, I do encourage you to definitely play this game. But guys, that is going to do it for this episode. So if you've enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave the video a like. It really helps out the channel. I really do appreciate it. So please do leave me a like. And hit subscribe if you want to see more from me. Guys, in case you don't think so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.